Welcome back to the channel, and today we are talking families in the area of Tampa Bay, Florida. And the reason I wanted to cover this topic this week is because I've had many conversations as of late when you look at relocating to the state of Florida, and if you're in the midst of this, you could probably be empathetic to this conversation. There are many, many cities and regions within this state where if you have a family, it's pretty easy to know where everybody's going. It's pretty defined. All the suburbs are here, the schools are here, the activities are here, and everybody just kind of clusters two or three options. You make a decision, it's pretty safe. If you go to a large urban area like a Jacksonville or a Tampa Bay, which is this, the subject matter today, then it's a little bit more convoluted because you do have suburbs, so you have a lot more beyond that. You have large cities, you have Tampa cities versus the city of St. Pete, you have a coastal beach part, but you also have the bay and you have north, south, you have commuting issues and all kinds of things. So if you go on the internet and you look at this blog sphere, a lot of the times they still mention the same suburbs, the easy stuff, the tried and true stuff, but it's not as simple as a conversation in a large area like Tampa Bay. So what I wanted to attempt to do here is I can't name them all, but I can give you an example of all of them. So if you're looking for to be in the city, the thick of things, but you want an elegant kind of safe neighborhood, I give you that. If you want the city, but a more affordable version of that premium option, I give you that. If you want to say, I want to take this whole conversation and drop it in St. Petersburg, I'll give you that. There are many directions you can go in to get suburban housing, so why would you pick one over the other? I try to cover that. Affordability, laid back coastal, and everything in between, so I hope it comes across that way. My name is Adam Hancock. This is the Florida Relocation Guide YouTube channel, your smartest way to buy, sell, and or invest in the entire state of Florida. I have a brand new Tampa Bay Relocation Digital Guide if you want to grab that before you go. The uh, link's in the description box below. And we also have something really exciting coming. I'm about to start the video here. <laughs> but we have something really exciting coming that I don't know if it'll be released by this video. But I have a community that's made just for this channel. So it's going to be a community group where basically you can ask me direct questions, as narrow as you want to get. I'm going to answer 100% of them. All of our free guides will be in there. My weekly kind of brain dumps of all the real-time information I'm working on. So this would be like if I sent you a monthly newsletter, you know, versus every Tuesday, you get all the new construction incentives, all the things I'm thinking through while I'm trying to create videos, all the conversations we're having with clients in real time. You get that in here, just a little different ecosystem. You guys can talk to each other. So I think it'll be cool. It's coming out very, very soon, and we will uh, send an email when it comes out. Without further ado, let's hop in. Okay, number one on my list in no particular order, we're going to start with the cliche, and we're going to talk suburbs, but we're going to talk a new home suburb. So both suburban and new home friendliness, new construction home, which is nice if you're relocating because of um, you know logistics and timing and convenience and all that kind of stuff, plus it's a new home. So the best one of this conversation in my mind, I've said it a lot on the channel so far, is probably Wesley Chapel. It's the idea of going north. Because Tampa Bay is sprawling and Hillsborough County and Pasco have a big portion that's inland, you can actually kind of shock and spray out many ways to do suburbs there, unlike a Sarasota or Naples, which are more condensed. But um, a lot of those are limited because of the maturity and because of how close they are to town. But north is where all the land was at. So it's important because you not only get all the cool things that come with suburbs, but you also get um, the idea of master plan and intentionality because of the foresight they're able to have if they have more time, more space, and, and who owns the land matters. So you fast forward to today, I won't get too crazy here, and you have an uh, unbelievable variety and unbelievable mix. So one, it feels new which is nice, right? The shopping centers are new, all the stuff's new, right? So you got the new targets and the new stores and it feels like suburbia and clean and fresh and all that kind of thing. But you have uh, multiple new construction uh, neighborhood opportunities and it's just in its infancy, right? If you look at newhomesource.com, for example, which is like the MLS of new homes, basically, look at where all the new neighborhoods cluster in Tampa Bay. They're all going north or they're going southeast, right? And southeast is a very different animal than going this direction, right? So you get variety, but you also get really cool master plan concepts, which is a bunch of neighborhoods that aren't in silos. They come together and they all make sense as they orient to each other, but they also come together for communal amenities. So gone are the days where people just value a nice individual neighborhood pool. They want more when they leave their neighborhood. So there's shops and there's schools, there's walkability, and they're doing freshwater lagoons. You know, you have Epperson, you have um, Wiregrass Ranch, just to name a few. But you also have some, uh, the 20 year old versions of what I just mentioned too. Seven Oaks, you have Meadow Point, so you just have a great mix. Um, there's shops. There's a Tampa premium outlet mall that's very close by. There's uh, open air outdoor malls. There's activities. There's churches. There's great schools and all the other things that you'd come to expect. 
And then just to tie a bow on this section, you know, this was always deemed a sacrifice for people and locationally. Because you go about 25 miles north of downtown Tampa and all the work districts, Ebor, South Tampa, all that kind of stuff gets further than that. And so people view that as a sacrifice on commute. So because of that, the evolution of this town has remained affordable. And now with the advent of work from home and some of these things that make you maybe don't need to go in town so that that sacrifice is not relevant to you, then you still get all the benefits from the old school thinking that it is. All right, number two, let's talk military. And I want to break this in two categories because we have both military relocation, which is massive, but we also have veteran friendliness, which I think is incredibly underrated when it comes to Tampa Bay. So on the relocation side, you have McDill Air Force Base, which is the sole reason a lot of people even get Tampa on the radar at all from out of state. Um, and it's in a great location. And when you're looking at all your options versus like an inland Arizona or something like that, like this area is amazing. And where McDill's based is unbelievable. It's close to all the stuff largest employer in Hillsborough County. But also, uh, when you're, as far as veteran goes, multiple VA centers, I think there's 21,000 plus veterans currently living in Tampa Bay. And whether you, you went there for relocation and stayed there, or you just found that the no state income tax, which trickles down to the pension tax, et cetera, and all these different random benefits when it comes to coastal proximity and all that kind of stuff is the reason that you actually relocated post your military career. It works in both capacities. What we're seeing with that being said, that a lot of people end up, if you have a family especially, is, um, is they go east. East still wins out in a lot, of, a lot of ways, you know, because, you know, where McDill's based, how lovely it is, it also is expensive to live near it because of how lovely it is. It's, it's urban, but it comes at a premium. It's just close to the water. It's close to South Tampa. It gets in that territory. So when people look to say, I need a little bit more for my money, I want more of a family Florida-style house. Uh, more of gated communities than uh, city boroughs, but they don't want to get crazy far from McDill. The best mousetrap in the past has been going east, and that is, uh, as example's sake, Brandon, Riverview, and then there's a city called Valrico, which got on people's radar for the simple reason alone is that they built a master plan community called Fishhawk, and Fishhawk was like that star on a map that a lot of military folks um, found out about going east from, but it gives you all the things I just mentioned as far as like more for your house, but it gives you schools, and it gives you a real close-knit community because this isn't like 400 neighborhoods over there, you know? So it becomes just a little bit more like like-minded people, similar age kids. It's a control of demographic. If you throw military on top of that, you know, there's military club, kid clubs in the schools. They do food truck nights and all this kind of thing. And your money goes pretty far for, for a house sneaky close you are miles-wise to like a downtown Tampa. You're, you know, 9, 10, 12, 13 miles in, in a lot of ways. So um, a lot of people are still favoring that versus going north or west at the moment. So that's my number two. All right, number three on the list, let's talk city living. If you're not someone that naturally is leaning in the direction of my first two, which are pretty traditional suburbs, then I wanted to give you an alternative. And I have a fantastic one, one of my favorite neighborhoods in all of Tampa Bay, and it's called Riverside Heights. So what this is going to give you, uh, my wife and I lived there personally for like four years for these reasons. It's going to give you um, a, a complete urban version of those first two. So instead of like these master plan, everything looks the same, the guarantees that a lot of people like, guarantees of demographic, control, maturity of neighborhood, all that kind of thing, uh, this is going on historics, one of the oldest neighborhoods in all of Tampa Bay. So because of that, you don't have as much control. You know, you don't have all the HOAs, you know, uh, you, it, depending on when people, how long they live there, when they move out, that's when the homes turn over. And, and to this day, then you have a mix of, you know, 1920s bungalows with crawl spaces and front porch parties and that full community feel. And then you have homes that people knocked down. They bought the land, bought the house, knocked it down and did a modern urban infill new construction. So it's a really cool feel as you go. And then also to its namesake, Riverside, um, there's a group of neighborhoods that are built around uh, the Hillsborough River in Tampa, which has become kind of like an eclectic scene. You have Seminole Heights and Tampa Heights and Closer you get to that river, you could have riverfront ha homes. And then the further you get from it, you can get a lot of affordability. Um, so it's going to give you that. It's going to give you mature trees, brick-lined streets, um, interesting and eclectic. And the big kicker here is that this whole thing is 2.8 miles one way to downtown Tampa. That's something you're not going to get in any of those suburbs. So where you lose control, you gain proximity. And that's the way I'd really look at this idea in, in totality. But Riverside Heights, I think, is a fantastic example for the moderately located and somewhat conservatively priced area versus some of the alternatives. 
All right, number four on my list, I wanted to give you a juxtaposition versus number three on my list. And if you like the sound of the stylistic differences in the housing and the bungalow feel and the communities and the non-traditional suburb, but you don't want to live in Tampa, you know, the real value of everything I mentioned in number three is close to Tampa stuff. Well, what if you want to be close to St. Petersburg stuff, which is the, you know, which is the other part of the three-headed Tampa Bay monster? Um, it's very different. Absolutely lovely. What if you want that? Well, the thing about St. Pete, almost 100% of the housing is like Riverside Heights. It's not, uh, there's not four suburbs to compare to. There's not a real bougie Hyde Park and a Channel Side. And there's not any of that, right? It's all historic housing. Very little new construction. So because of that, it could be easier or harder to navigate. The way to do that with a family right now, in my opinion, is to go slightly northeast of downtown St. Petersburg. And that is, we'll call it three neighborhoods or several. Old Northeast, St. Paul Euclid, Woodlawn proper, and you know, you can even throw in a historic Kenwood. And it's going to give you community. It's going to give you front porch living, walkability, uh, brick line streets, a, a variety mix of housing, a big mix of pricing. And depending on where you are, you could walk right into the farmer's market in downtown St. Petersburg. Downtown St. Pete is much more a lifestyle first, work second versus like a downtown Tampa. And, um, and people get romantic about it. It's charming. It is, it is quite lovely. So if you like that feel and you wanted uh, to compare Tampa versus St. Petersburg, this is what I would do for my number four. All right, number five on the list, let's talk coastal. And I want to mention Dunedin, Florida. You know, this is a little bit of an anomaly in this conversation because typically people don't see coast in Florida the most part when relocating a family, especially because it's so mature that you lose a lot of the things that you want. Like there's not room to build these large um, communities, these gated kind of deals. There's not room to do new construction in a lot of areas. Um, you know, the schools have been there forever and there's not a ton of them. So you're navigating public schools that could be spotty a lot of times. And that's why, you know, the suburbs become a natural choice because just control again, right? They can build all that together and make sure it's perfect. Well, um, not everybody wants that. And, you know, you're coming to Florida, you're coming to Tampa Bay, and you might want access to the cities and some of the stuff, some of the charter schools and all that kind of stuff. But what if you want to live more of a quaint coastal lifestyle to raise your family? You know, like a Vero Beach of the world or, a, you know, a, like a 30A district like Pensacola or something like that. Well, Tampa Bay has a, a really interesting one for me. There's a lot of beach towns. But Dunedin, Florida is this sneaky old school Florida throwback. It is on the Gulf, but it's above the Barrier Islands, so it basically gets you a little bit on its own. It sits, you know, Clearwater Beach and Caladesi Island and Honeymoon Island in that area is the northernmost tip of the Gulf Coast beaches. Well, there's still water to be had, just the beaches run out. Dunedin sits right above that. So what, what it gives you is it gives you beach on one side, bay on the other side. It gives you about eight, nine minutes down to Clearwater Beach. St. Pete Beach is below that. Uh, Treasure Island, all those beaches you have access to. Uh, but also you could shoot to downtown St. Pete. You could shoot to downtown Tampa if you need to. Um, and it's just going to, it's got a beautiful, charming, quaint little downtown. It's a very intentional town. That's a big thing for me is that no one ends up in Dunedin on accident. It would be impossible. The geography of it, where, you know, what it is to the town, you wouldn't end up there randomly. It would be a choice. And because of that, the community is vibrant and, and they're uh, welcoming and inclusive because they're excited they're there and they're excited you're there. So one thing to look at, uh, barring, uh, you know, the seemingly negatives of the schools, you got to navigate all that kind of stuff. But Dunedin, Florida could be an interesting coastal option if you're seeking Tampa Bay with a family. All right, number six on the list, we're going to get a little bit more nuanced now that we have a foundational layer. And we're going to talk something I'm calling the in-betweener, and that's West Chase in western Tampa, Florida. So the idea here is that this is the other direction you can go to get a semblance of suburban housing, right? I mentioned going north as number one. Number two is going east. Well, uh, if you want to go another direction, you got to go west because south is water. And this area would give you proximity to kind of proximity to both, which you go to Tampa Bay. What do you have? You have Tampa. Most, most of the cool amenities in Tampa for families are in Hillsborough County. They're the Tampa stuff, right? Well, then you also have the Gulf beaches on the other side in Pinellas County. This sits where West Chase sits 16, minute, 16 miles one way to downtown Tampa, which I use as like a marker. Um, and then 20 miles also one way to uh, Clearwater Beach. So I get that's not five minutes away, but if you wanted access to kind of all the things Tampa had to offer, but you still needed suburban housing, this could be an interesting way to satiate that need. 
Now, West Chase itself is a concept. It's a master plan concept on top of that. So it's not that old, actually. I think most of it was built in the late 90s, early 2000s, multiple neighborhoods uh, and traditional amenities that would come with like the suburbs. Uh, there's golf course, there's a town center mixed in there. Uh, you have Citrus Park and Northdale and Carrollwood that sit near it too if you want more of a mature suburb. But these are what you think of when you think of suburban kind of communities, like gated or not. They offer that kind of level of housing, um, but also put you kind of in the middle. If you don't know where you're working yet, or you're like, I don't want to really move you know, to Brandon because that's really far from the beach, then West Chase, Florida could be interesting. Okay, number seven on the list, I wanted to talk uh, higher end from like a price point, more luxurious from a price point standpoint to give that category. And there's a really interesting neighborhood as an example, and it's called Palmasia West. So if this isn't your traditional suburb, right? It's much more urban city based. So it's not that, it's not on the fringes, but it's also a more mature version than some of the other city options I mentioned like Riverside Heights or Seminole or Old Northeast. You know, even five, six, seven years ago, a lot of those areas, um, you know, were in complete gentrification. You know, any historic district, uh, it takes a long time to evolve and there's no control of that timing. So what typically happens is uh, the areas that are deemed, if you had to pick one, the best absolute spot in town, close to all the stuff, close to all the amenities and the theme parks, but also the water um, are more secluded, those areas get popular first, and then when that ripples, not everybody can live in one neighborhood, that ripples, then the areas close to them get popular, and then close to them get popular, and that's how a town evolves naturally, right? There's no control of timing. There's boosters like COVID that can accelerate it. But Palmasia West is one of the areas that was deemed one of the best areas you could possibly live in a, a long time ago. So because of that, it has all the cool things of the historic neighborhood, and a lot of the homes were restored, not wiped out but it became a much more mature version of that, i.e. Uh, the, the overall values of the neighborhood are much more similar and the homes are much more similar levels of quality to each other versus some of the areas that are more house to house, street to street. So Palmasia West could be a really interesting example. If you throw in Palmasia West and historic Hyde Park, they give you a stone's throw a mileage wise to everything Tampa has to offer. You also sit right above, above the water. There's a Beautiful, wonderful private country club that's in Palmasia as well. And this area to boot has one of the highest rated public high schools with plant in the entire region. Um, Historic Hyde Park has a village that is a six block uh, shopping mixed use district as well. But if you're looking at um, the kind of shopping criteria bucket of a uh, home price of over $1 million on average, and you're cool with buying a resale home um, close to the stuff, then this area could be really interesting. Okay, my eighth and final on the list, I want to just talk affordability in general, and I want to give you a few different ways to look at it. So the best way to save money on every concept I mentioned is to live and breathe that evolution of the preferred version of where you want to live. So the junior version is always going to be cheaper than the preferred version, and there's a lot of ways to do that. So take uh, Westy Chapel. We first went north as number one on the list. Tampa Palms, New Tampa it's called. And Wesley Chapel are right up there with like people valuing in their minds. Lutz is another one that really, you know, people value in their minds. Well, if you go slightly above both of those, Lando Lakes, Zephyr Hills, fantastic way to save money. Similar concept, a uh, lot cheaper per house. If you go Brandon, for instance, we went east as our second option. Brandon, Valrico, even Riverview. Those are a little too close to town. So they got popular first. Well, if you go below them, one of the cheapest possible ways to buy a new construction home right now in all of Tampa Bay's landscape is going southeast, right? Again, south is in the water, so you got to go south and east, but it's right below Riverview, and that's Apollo Beach, and more importantly, Wamama, Ruskin, and Sun City Center. It could be in a random location, depending on what you're looking for, but you wouldn't believe uh, how far your money would go. And then, uh, you know, kind of keep that same concept, right? You want urban living with Riverside Heights, well, uh, it's a lot cheaper if you go north of like Seminole Heights to do that because Riverside Heights, again, is only two and a half miles to downtown Tampa. If you love Dunedin's concept, um, you could go above that to Newport Ritchie and have a similar kind of vibe, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's the best way to look at affordability in the town. That's why I, I know I went probably a little too rambly on this video, but uh, I do try to explain it in a way where once you understand, you get it. And then in an area that is vast and has millions and millions of people and ton of realtors you could talk to and, you know, a ton of home sales you could look at uh, becomes a lot uh, simpler conversation if you understand where all the value originally came from. And it makes it a lot 
more educated uh, buyer or shopper in general. So we'll wrap it there. All right, that does it for today's video on the Florida Relocation Guide. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you have been watching and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. We try to uh, equip you to be the smartest real estate consumer, whether you're buying or selling in the entire state of Florida, but especially Southwest Florida, Tampa, Sarasota, Naples, um, economics wise, lifestyle wise, and everything in between. We have a really unique team. So uh, we're gonna try to be the best resource we can in that world. So please subscribe if that interests you at all. Uh, the, the free resource thing I mentioned at the beginning, we have a Sarasota relocation guide, a flip book. They're like 15 pages uh, and they get more narrow, like my, even my favorite restaurants and stuff are in there. Uh, Tampa Bay, we're working on a new Naples one, but we have a new construction one specifically as well. We have analytical tools for both Sarasota and Venice built on there, uh, which has every sale that existed in the last 360 days. So that's on the website on the sunshinestateco.com on a free guides tab. And also that community group I mentioned, please keep a lookout for that. I think that's gonna be one of the most effective ways we can communicate regularly in a community group. So that's gonna be the first of its kind that we're gonna release there. And if we can help you in the real estate market, buying, selling, investing, I own a brokerage called the Sunshine State Company that's directly on the back of this kind of content. So if you resonate with the way we speak, the way we think about the market, all that does is let you also use us to transact that so the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. That's the idea there. Again, my name is Adam Hancock. I really appreciate you guys taking any time of your day to watch these videos and we'll see you on the next one.